Thank you. Uh, welcome to my presentation. My name is Franz Paschke. I study civil engineering at the Technical University in Darmstadt. And for the last six months, I worked in the vacuum insulated energy efficient technology hub at the University of Sydney under Jane Kosa, Kocha. And um, I investigated the thermomechanical performance of a vacuum insulated glazing. I will start with an introduction to vacuum insulated glazing, or VAG. Then I will go over to explain the origins and the response of the VAG due to temperature load. The third point will be the presentation of my finite element modeling data and the comparison to the analytical model data. And in the end, I will conclude all results and talk about the future work we will do. Um, vacuum insulated glazing is in general a high performance insulating glazing unit. It helps to uh, in increase the thermal insulation of a building's envelope, especially to reduce the energy lo loss through, through the windows. And in the last decade, the architectural design uh, has been uh, to an increase of the transparent part of a building. Therefore, the impact of the energy uh, of the insulation of the windows is, is huge. When the first VIG was successfully um, produced at 1989 at the University of Sydney, the requirements for the energy performance of building weren't, weren't the same as today. Therefore, the VIG product were, uh, was developed before its time. But at latest, with the European Directive of energy performance of, for buildings in 2010, the VIG product has its reasonable, reasonable ground. In general, it is possible to achieve low view values, much thinner and lighter window constructions. Here on the picture, you can see the principal construction of the VIG unit. Normally, you have two glass sheets of soda lime glass, soda lime float glass, which built the main construction of the VIG unit. The vacuum gap in between the two glass sheets is sucked out through the pump out tube in the edge of the, uh, one of the glass surface. Around the edges, the vacuum glazing is sealed with a soda lime glass. This has to be hermetic to, be, to ensure the vacuum be sta is stable over, the, over decades. In the evacuated space, there is an array of support pillars which ensure the separation of the two glass, gla of the two glass sheets. Otherwise, the two glass sheets would bend towards each other and break. Normally, a lower coating is placed on one of the internal surfaces of the VIG. Yeah. So how does a VIG compare to a standard IGU window? you can achieve much thinner and lighter window profiles. Therefore, the usage of material for the window production could be reduced. The durability of the edge seal, which is solar glass, is much better than the rubber material in an IGU window. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so you have a much wider design options in thermal and mechanical performance with a VIG unit, especially if you, in the application as a hybrid unit. The hybrid, which consists of one, one VIG unit and another gas filled gap and a third glass pane, can perfectly apply it for the retrofitting of existing buildings. You can just replace the old IGU glazing with the hybrid, with the same thickness, and, but with a much lower U value. Therefore, it is not necessary to change the frame in, an, in the existing buildings. And you can uh, achieve U values as low as 0 0.2 watts per square meter Kelvin, which is comparable to a solid wall. Therefore, the weak point in the thermal insulation of a building's envelope can be minimized which would have the greatest short and long-term uh, impact on, on mitigating the climate change uh, in the building sector. 
So the origin of the thermal load in the VIG lies in the thermal processes of a VIG. The total U value which, which describes the heat, conduct, the heat which conducts through the glazing unit composed in the VIG of four different thermal processes. The first thermal process is the radia radia radiative heat flow in the two internal surfaces of the VIG unit. It can be assumed to be uniform over the internal surfaces. Normally, it is minimized with a lowy coating on one or two of the internal surfaces. The second is the heat conduction through each support pillar. This leads to non-uniform um, surface temperature distributions on the external and in internal surface of the VIG. The third type of heat conduction is the edge seal conduction, which is maybe the, probably the most important um, conduction in the VIG unit. It impacts the overall U value of the, VI, of, the, of the VIG unit and the stress distribution in the VIG as well, as we will show later on. Oh. And again. Uh, Gaze, Gaze's heat conduction due to residual gas in the cavity between the two glass sheets is for a good sample with a pressure below 0 0.1 pas Pascal uh, natural sample. So the thermal load on a, VA, on a window is applied as soon as the, as the glazing is installed in a closed envelope of a building. And the temperature of the inside and the outside environment differs. So the magnitude of the temperature load is proportional to is proportional to the temperature difference of the in, inside and outside environment. Uh, the uh, origin of the stress is uh, the temperature distribution across the glass surface and through the thickness of the VIG unit. This will be shown on the next slides. So here you can see the temperature difference through the thickness of the VIG. Um, you have on the hot side, you have the hot, hot sheet which expands more relative to the cold glass sheet. But because of the rigid edge seal, the expansion can't be as established as it would with, with, a free, with a free edge. So therefore, shear forces on the, inter on the internal surfaces occur um, and form uni unidirectional bending moments to the midplane of each glass surface. Therefore, the whole glazing bends towards the hot environment. And stresses occur on the external surfaces and on the internal surfaces of the glazing unit. On the hot, on the, in the hot glass sheet, you have tensile stresses on the external surface, on surface four, and on surface three, on the internal surface of the hot glass sheet, you have compression stresses. For the cold glass sheet, it's in the other way around. Oh. So, the second, um, the second reason for the thermal the stresses in the VIG is the thermal temperature distribution across the glass surface. Here you can see a plot of the finite element model um, with a temperature diff of surface 4 with a temperature difference of 49 degrees Celsius uh, between the inside and outside environment. As you can see in the center region, you, you have much higher temperatures than on the edge seal region. Therefore, the thermal expansion rate between the center region and the edge region is different. And this leads to uh, tensile stresses, or also known under the hoop stresses in a vacuum glazing. So because of the uh, temperature difference across the, uh, through the thickness of the VIG, we have the bend, isotropic bending stresses in the center region uh, all over the VIG unit. And because of the temperature distribution across the surfaces, 
we have hoop stresses. Both stresses add up at the edge of the VLG unit. So um, the place where the critical failure will occur in a VLG unit has much more, uh, much more indicators. As just said, the stress resulting from bending and the hoop stresses add up right at the edge of the VLG unit. The stresses on surface 4 and surface 1 that describes the external surfaces have a much higher probability for failure, uh, for failure because they are exposed to water and as we know, glass is much weaker under exposure, exposure to water. So um, another reason for, uh, to find the critical failure stresses in the VLG is that the flaws, the probabilities of flaws and cracks right at the edge is much higher um, than in the center region due, due to the cutting process of the glass. And um, of course, as we know, that glass failure is more likely to tension than, tension than compression stress. The critical failure stress occur at the edge on surface 4 parallel to the edge. Because surface 4 is the hot surface, it has a con convex shape, therefore tensile stresses. Yeah. So the analytical model which we used to calculate the maximum stresses at the edge, so the critical stresses, was developed at the University of Sydney. The first term represents the bending of the VIG. The second term considers the edge stiffness of the VIG. And the third term uh, represents the hoop stresses which we just talked about. So um, the finite element model um, which we used is you can see here the principal stress distribution on surface 4 uh, for the unconstrained case, uh, case. So you have no clamping because of the frame um, in our study now. And as you can see, the finite element model confirms that the maximum stresses are right at the edge of the, of the VIG unit. So the, v the properties of the VIG unit are material properties and environmental boundary conditions when according to European standards. And um, yes, so the, ref and this, the reference VIG unit um, has, has a glass thickness of 3 mm, an edge length of 500 mm, an edge seal width of 5 mm, a pillar separation of 20 mm, and each pillar has, had a, has a radius of 0.25 mm and a height of 0.2 mm. So here you can see the first plot along a center line from the edge from the edge towards the center of the VIG unit of each, surf, uh, of each surface. So for surface 2 and surface 3, you can see that the maximum stresses occur right in the, occur in the center region. But for surface 4 and surface 3, you can see that the maximum stresses occur right at the edge of, of the VIG unit. So as we said before, Surface 4 and surface 1 has, have a much higher failure probability. Therefore, the critical stresses uh, are again confirmed to be right at the edge of the VIG unit. So the analytical model gives us quite comparable um, solutions. But most of the times, the analytical uh, solution overestimates the stresses in the VIG. So here you can see uh, in the graph how does the stresses change with the, with the magnitude of the temperature load. The orange line shows this, the maximum stresses at the edge which we investigated. The yellow line shows the stresses um, in the center region. The broken lines are the finite element results underneath. So 
you can see for small temperature difference, like 10 degrees Celsius, the finite element model uh, data and the analytical model data um, are in a very good agreement. But for, high, but, but for higher temperatures, temperature load, you can see the analytical model and the finite element model uh, disagree. So the analytical model overestimates the stresses. This has contributed that the nonlinear bending effect gets bigger with higher, uh, higher temperature loads. So the next uh, parameter which we uh, investigated was uh, is uh, the size of the unit, of the VIG unit, which is very important for the application in, uh, in the building sector, of course. And the, as you can see, the analytical model, oh, the analytical model uh, predicts that the stresses increase with the magnitude of the, of the finite, uh, with the magnitude of the temperature load. But the finite element model uh, predicts that the uh, stresses for on the on the edge increase up to a unit size of 0 0.3 meter edge length. But for larger VIG, VIG units, the maximum stress is right at the edge reduce again. So, yeah. Uh, another parameter which we investigated was the influence of the external heat transfer coefficients. Here you can see the stress, the, the, the maximum stresses for different external heat transfer coefficients. Um, with higher external heat transfer coefficients, the maximum stresses on surface four increase as well. So if, if we have the case for the European standard with an external heat transfer coefficient on the outside environment of 25 watts per square meter Kelvin and on the inside environment of 7.7 .7 watts per square meter Kelvin with a temperature difference of 49 degrees Celsius, we get with the final end element model a third uh, maximum stresses on surface 4 of 13.8 megapascal. The analytical model predicts a much higher stress of 18.25 me megapascal. This, so you can see again that the analytical model overestimates the stresses in the VIG unit. Uh, normally, um, you as we assume that the heat external heat transfer coefficient is uniform over the glass surface. But with some out outstanding um, uh, pieces on the, on the building's facade, it, the heat transfer coefficient, so the, the wind velocity in the edge region of the glass surface can change. Therefore, we investigated non-uniform heat transfer coefficients on, the ex on, on surface one. We applied uh, different heat transfer coefficients along a parameter area um, from 10 to 20 watts per square meter Kelvin, while we have still the heat transfer coefficient in the center region of 25 watts per square meter Kelvin. So the results of the study is shown here. As you can see, for, um, for a heat transfer coefficient in the outer area of 20, 20 watts per square meter Kelvin, which is only a small difference, the edge stresses increase compare, compared to the uniform uh, to the uniform heat transfer coefficient con yeah, configuration. So this is attributed to an increase of the edge temperature compared to the center area. Therefore, the hoop stresses increase. Um, but for small, uh, for, for, for very small uh, heat transfer coefficients of 10 in the outer area, you can see that the maximum stresses at the edge decrease again. This, this is attributed that the average temperature of the cold surface, of the whole cold surface, increase and therefore comes closer to the temperature of the inside, uh, inside hot temp surface. Yeah, 
we al also changed the, the width of the area in the, of the heat, external heat transfer coefficient. Here you can see that with a, with a larger width of the external heat transfer coefficient in the outer area, you have an increase of the stresses as well. Ah. And compared to the uniform, uh, to the uniform uh, heat transfer coefficient, the stresses are higher. So, yeah. So it could we could say that a covering of uh, with a frame of some something else could uh, increase the maximum stresses in the VAG. Therefore, uh, we should make further investigations um, in this area. Okay, now I try to conclude uh, all, all the results. Um, so the maximum stresses in a VIG unit occur on surface four, right at the edge, parallel to the edge. The analytical model overestimates the stresses in a VIG unit for high temperatures and large unit sizes. The maximum stresses at, at, the, edge seal, uh, at the edge of a VIG decrease with the unit size. To make, um, with a higher external heat transfer coefficient, therefore high wind velocities, for example, the magnitude of the maximum stresses increase as well. A non-uniform heat transfer coefficient on the glass surface, which would be more like in the reality, in the reality case, can uh, affect the maximum stresses in a VIG unit. Therefore, further investigations has to be done. Um, future work, which we uh, work, be, which we will do in the future, or and we already started, uh, strain and deflection measurements on VIG samples, with and without a frame, and um, of course. Because uh, temperature load is a cyclic, is of cyclic nature, we have to do uh, cyclic uh, tests with cyclic temperature loads on a real VIG unit. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Um, yeah. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did, why not like the video? Drop us a comment below as well as share the video with others since GPD is all about sharing. And to receive more videos in future, subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon for notifications. Ciao!